What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 12, episode five, In Hot Water. So go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So this episode starts off with Garcelle, who with her older sister, Chantal, is checking out her new um, beachfront property. It's located in Ventura County, which is in between Santa Barbara and LA. I believe it says it's roughly like 35 miles north of Malibu. So she's kind of close to Denise Richards, if if Denise still lives in Malibu. I'm not sure about that. Um, but they're still cool, so she'll be, she'll be nearby. Um, and the property is a teardown. It is very old, super rundown, but she just purchased it for the property. It's a beachfront property. And she has a really cool vision for it. So she's knocking it all down. And she's making this luxurious, um, really contemporary beach house. She talks about it's kind of um, an investment for like her family. So it's so she, she has a place for her and her kids to go and enjoy their time together with you know, with her grandkids as well at this point. And you know for, it's for somewhere for where like when she's gone, they'll have somewhere to go. So then we kind of have like rapid fire sit downs. Um, so first off, it's Erica and Dorit sitting down. They meet up for lunch and they start with Dur um, Dorit just talking about her her therapy session that she's going through. Um, we saw it at the end of episode four. It's a really intense therapy session where Dorit is basically thinking about um, this negative traumatic experience she had and is basically working to, um, to not be so triggered by it essentially. So kind of working to, um, to deal with coping net mechanisms and learn tools to deal with this anxiety. So she kind of touches on that. Um, she says that the therapy is draining though. While it's helpful, it's so draining, but she's learning a lot from it. Um, and then Dorit and Erica, they segue to discussing Rina's mom. So as we know, uh, Lois, Lisa Rina's mom, she had a stroke. And so Lisa, she, um, she's she been up in Oregon for about a week, I believe. She's been up there for a while, just being with her. And um, we know that she's gonna pass away soon. She's in hospice care, just keeping her comfortable. Um, and yeah, they also touch on the upcoming trip to Mexico. Dorit's putting it on. Um, they're going to Punta de Mita, which is by Puerto Verta. And they're going to be going on Diana's private jet. I was like, of course you guys are. <laughs> um, and then we quickly segue over to Crystal and Kyle, who are also meeting for lunch elsewhere. And they're basically sitting down to discuss the bullshit between Crystal and Sutton. So, as you recall, Crystal alleged that a year ago, Sutton said something dark. She said something really dark, and she suggested that it pertained to race, essentially. Um, and Kyle's basically just trying to get to the bottom of it, and Crystal outright refuses to, to repeat what Sutton says. And um, in turn, Kyle, she says that um, Crystal's comment was dangerous, and she says she thinks Crystal may be gaslighting. So, Kyle, Crystal taught Kyle the word gaslighting. Now Kyle's using it back on Crystal. Um, but as to Kyle saying Crystal's comment was dangerous, I don't disagree with that because it's very similar to um, back in the Amsterdam dinner from hell that happened. I don't even know what season that happened. But like Kim Richards said something to Lisa Rinna about like, oh, let's not talk about the husband. Let's not talk about your home life. And Eileen Davidson said, that's very dangerous. That's a very dangerous comment to say. Because it is, it's, it's saying it without saying it. You know what I mean? Um, so it's basically like laying everything out and letting us fill in the blanks. I believe that's how Erica put it. Um, but yeah, and Crystal is kind of taken aback by Kyle's comment about, you know, her potentially gaslighting. Um, and they kind of resolve things, but you can kind of tell that it's awkward. Like, they... They don't like get into it or anything, but it's it's a very awkward, they awkwardly move past the issue. You know what I mean? Um, and then I guess the next day, Diana goes over to Kyle's house um, and just to like sit down and hang out. It's Again, it's like rapid fire sit downs. It's really, it's really weird this episode. Um, but the main standout thing to me in this little scene was like, so Kyle greets Diana and she has like a little charcuterie board, a shark coochie board <laughs> on, on laid out. And then Kyle's like, oh my gosh, wait, the dogs, let me, let me move it because the dogs will eat it. And it's like, ugh, like, Kyle, ugh. I mean, I get it, you know, dogs are going to be dogs, but, it, but it's like, you don't leave, 
you, you gotta be smarter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not blaming the dogs, but it's like, Kyle, come on, girl. You know how they are. But she eventually seals off the room, basically, so the dogs will eat the fucking food. Um, and right together, Kyle begins dishing on, like, day one of Paris's wedding, um, because Kyle's Paris was with his aunt, obviously. Um, and I guess Paris's wedding is, like, a three-day affair. I didn't watch that, um, the Paris wedding special on Hulu. I watched like five minutes of it and I got bored to be honest. So uh, I should probably finish it. I'm not going to though. <laughs> but, um, and Kyle also shares that Farah, her eldest daughter, got engaged basically like right before Paris's wedding. So um, Farah didn't share the news right away because it was like, this is Paris's day. I'm not gonna do it to my cousin. Um, but Kyle is very, very excited that Farah is getting married because Kyle was just talking about how like oh I, I can't wait to have a, be a grandmother and now Kyle's like I'm gonna step closer to it I'm gonna step closer so that's that was cool um and speaking of babies Diana begins speaking on her infant her one-year-old um Eliana um and then if you recall like I think it was the last episode or maybe the last a three or four um Diana shared that she still has like I think it's like six embryos she has like six embryos like, just, like, frozen. Like, just waiting to be... And it's like, girl? <laughs> she, has, she has six embryos. Um, and Kyle basically asking, like, oh, like, are you planning on, like, having another one? Are like, you planning on having more kids? And um, Diana shares that... So, five months after she had Eliana, her youngest daughter, her one-year-old, um, she got pregnant with a baby boy. And... But when she was five months pregnant with that baby boy, she traumatically found out that the baby was dead. That the baby who was in, that was still inside of her was dead. So yeah, it's a really emotional scene. And um, but Dana goes on to say that she's considering possibly having one more baby just so that her last like pregnancy experience, her last experience with carrying a baby, it doesn't end on that note essentially. Um, because she says that the doctors have no idea why that happened, um, she's totally fine and everything, but she's just kind of trying to grapple with that, so, um, so yeah, that's what happened with Diana. And then with yet another sit-down, we have Garcelle and Sutton leaking up for dinner and drinks, basically, and, um, we see Sutton being quirky with her drink, she gets, like, so she asks for, like, a drink and, like, um, a glass of water, and then she, like, mixes the drink, half the drink with the, half the water and makes her, her drink that way. Is this what chopsticks are for? Okay. Nope, didn't do it. Is this a game that you play at the fair? Uh, there you go. It is today. Oh, no one's watching. And I was like, I get it, girl. Like, sometimes those fucking drinks are so goddamn strong. Like, okay, so now I'm a shots guy. Like, it's because with mixed drinks, it's always like a gamble. You know, it's it, it could be not strong enough. It'll be too strong. And frankly, they make you kind of bloated. You know, it's like, uh, so I like shots. I feel like they're more efficient and you know what's up. You, you bite the bullet and then you chase it with, you know, some soda or some, like, you know, whatever. So that's how I do it. I feel like it's more efficient. So I get where something's coming from. Because there are times I'd be, specifically in L.A., when I go to L.A., um, where I used to go pretty often, um, I would literally ask the bartender, I'd be like, hey, can I get, like, a, like a, a rum and Coke, but, like, not super strong? Because there are a couple times in L.A. and here in San Diego, actually, where, like, I'd get a, a mixed drink, and it'd be too fucking strong for me to, like, enjoy. It's a mixed drink. I don't have a chaser with it. You know, it's... So it's like, uh, so I just get shots. I don't, fuck that bullshit. So I, I get you, Sutton. It, it was a little quirky, but I get it. Um, but anyways, while Sutton and Garcelle are looking up, Garcelle jumps into talking about the drama with Crystal, basically. Um, and she gets Sutton to share, to basically say what she said. And so essentially, last year when they're up in Lake Tahoe, it was, um, Sutton, Crystal, and Kyle... And going off of their, continuing their conversation on race and stuff, Sutton went on to, like, share a story about how, like, um, when her daughter was young, she had, like, a pool party or something. And, like, Sutton looked out the window, 
and she saw her her white daughter a couple of black girls like an asian girl and like a, and a red-headed irish catholic girl just all hanging out in the pool and just in jacuzzi having a good time and Sutton brought it up to basically be like this is how it should okay. be Porter asked to have friends over and they were sitting in the jacuzzi and i'm like there's my white child with a black girls in there a Chinese girl was in the jacuzzi and then like probably a redheaded um, Irish Catholic girl. And I'm like, this is what it should be. I obviously don't disagree, but you need to go further than that. I don't believe that that is enough anymore. Sutton brings up how, up how that is what she said. And Garcelle's like, is there anything else? Like, is, is, was that it? And Sutton said, no, that is what I said. And that is what I think Crystal is alluding to when she says I said something dark. That is the only thing I can possibly think of. And Garcelle is like, that is, that doesn't sound right. Because Garcelle's kind of like, how is that dark? How is that? Because mind you, the way Crystal's wording it was very, it was very like, oh, Sutton said like the N word or she said some, like you know, it was very like, you know, um, but no, it was just that. And so Garcelle's like, huh. Am I missing something? Because Sutton sees it as so light. Crystal sees it as so dark. Is there missing pieces to this puzzle? So it's, we finally hear what um, Sutton thinks she said, but we don't know if that's, we don't get Crystal's confirmation just yet. However, we do get, um, production does play the video. So by production playing the video, that's basically telling us, okay, that is what Sutton said. You know what I mean? Um, so then we check in with Lisa Rinna over up in Medford, Oregon. Um, it's a little scene on her mom, Lois, because she has passed away. Um, she died in hospice at 93 and a half years old. Holy shit, like 93 and a half. Like, that's crazy. And she was still like walking, talking, active, able to see and hear and everything. So, you know, good good for Lois, you know, re really full life. Um, and Rinna, she emotionally kind of ref reflects on, um, cause Lois, she had a directive to like, she had a do not resuscitate and she had a directive that she, she wasn't to like have a feeding tube, be put on life support, none of that shit. Which I, I understand, I, 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 cause I'm, my family's the same way with that stuff. But Lisa's talking about how she struggled with that, you know, basically, like, basically, she struggled with, like, respecting her mother's wishes to, like, hey, if I'm, if I'm dying, let me die, when there are medical ways to, like, prolong, you know what I mean? Like, life support, it's feeding tubes, there's all that shit, but she had to respect her mom's wishes, and she kind of touches on how it was kind of tough for her. So that was really emotional, I thought that was good, um useful insight to that situation, you know? Um, and then the girls back home, they learn of the news shortly thereafter. And they learn of this the day before the Mexico trip. Um, and it's just a little scene about Lisa Rinna and her mom Lois. We get like some, like a little tribute to her, if you will. Um, but yeah, 93 and a half. God, that is a, that is a full life lived, honestly. Good for her. Um, so the next day, all the girls are linking up to fly out to Mexico. Um, Lisa decides to go on the trip. She says that she had to be there and that her mom would have, like, she would have wanted her to go. She would have been like, why are you missing out on this fun trip? Because I died at 93 years old. You know what I mean? Like, go have fun. Um, Lisa was up there for like a week and she knew that Lois was going to die soon. So she already set up all the funeral arrangements and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, she's going down, um, this kind of mingling, all chillin', having a good time, everyone, no drama, um, before flying off on Diana's little jet. And then they arrive, and they get divided up into two different cars, and Sutton, Crystal, Erica, and Garcelle are all in one car. And so everyone, um, all the other girls, they're all, like, laughing, like, oh my gosh, all the awkwardness is in the other car. And then it goes over, and it is quiet between the four of them for, like, a little bit, but then Garcelle, she brings up like, um, oh, I'll bet $5 that Derby is speaking Spanish to the driver right now. And then they all kind of bond over talking shit about Derby. And my dad accurately talking shit about Derby, because then we see her 
first fucking speaking Italian. I, I don't speak Italian, but I fucking know it when I hear it. That was a, that was not Spanish. That was Italian. She spoke at first, and then she switched to Spanish, and it was just like, oh, it was so extra. And then they also pointed out how like yeah, and the, she'll speak Spanish to a driver, and then the driver will respond back in English, and it was just so accurate and so on point. I'll bet you five dollars Doreen is speaking Spanish in her car. Oh my gosh. La ricondizionata. <laughs> but when they speak back to you in English. What's your team for? 20 minutes. No, it's a, ra yeah, it's it's a, a real a red flag. flag. Oh, 20 minutes no. minutes. We speak yeah. English, all right? Yeah. Like, leave us the f alone. Gracias. Um, they get to the hotel, they settle in, and they get ready for a lovely dinner. Um, Lisa and all the girls, sans Dorit, um, because she's running a little bit late. They're all reminiscing about Lois at the dinner table. It's an outdoors dinner. I believe they're, like, on, right on the beach, um, and, like, the sand and stuff. Um, and yeah, it was really cute. Uh, Lisa points out that, like, Lois loved being famous, essentially, because, like, um, through Lisa Rinna being on the reality show, we got to be introduced to Lois and stuff, and she, Lisa would, like, post videos of her. It was really cute because she'd be like, how many likes did that video of me get? And she'd be like, 500,000. And Lois would love it. So it was just a really, really cute moment. Um, shortly thereafter, Dorit pops in and she shares how she was basically like triggered by being put in a ground, in a ground floor suite. Um, and so she's late because she presumably had to like switch suites and get work out all those arrangements. So that's kind of explained. Um, and then everyone's there, everyone's sitting down, and Lisa Rinna, she, she knows exactly what she's doing. She's like, so I was gone for a week. Did I miss anything? And everyone's just like, mm. because, like, obviously Crystal and Sutton's bullshit came up and all that stuff. So everyone's kind of quiet for a bit, but then Sutton, she addresses the elephant in the room, um, regarding Crystal's comment. And she basically... She has a few shit. She has some stuff at first. And she goes on to say, I don't want to be misconstrued. You know my character. Um, my family. We love everyone. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, and so yeah, she's basically shutting down Crystal's insinuation that she was racially insensitive or racist. And then oddly, Crystal goes into it and she, she makes some analogy. She says that like, Oh, words are like a, a, a war shark test, a war, a war shack test. And everyone's like, huh? And Erica clarifies that's an ink blot test. So those, those ink blot, like, oh, what do you see here? You know? Um, and then Crystal, she, she's like, oh, I, I know it's, it's a big word. Sorry. And then Garcelle's like, wait, what the fuck? Like, you, like, you know, like, calm down. Like, don't be rude. And for Crystal... For someone who's so fucking, who's so woke and so fucking, like, aware of all this shit, she should know that that's, like, a microaggression. You know what I'm saying? Like, Crystal, if you're gonna be out here fucking accusing people of being a certain way, like, check yourself, bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, it's not hypocrisy. Like, I found it a really hypocritical moment for her. It's like, bitch, you're gonna be sitting here talking all this shit about Sutton doing this and that, and you're gonna fucking say, oh yes, that's, that's a big word, I'm sorry, to Garcelle. You know what I mean? Like, like really? I'm an English major. I fucking taught, I was a TA in fucking grad school. I didn't know what a Warshak test is. I don't know what an inkblot test is. I didn't know it was called a Warshak test. I'm not fucking psychology, bitch. So I just thought that was really fucked up. Not fucked up, but it was really stupid of Crystal. It was, was really weird of her. Um... And yeah, and then Sutton, she basically gets real and she goes in on Crystal about her subject and about basically how she's moving. She's like, hey, I like where our friendship is going, but I don't like what you're doing with me right now. And you tried to assassinate my character twice now. So she gets really real. She gets really real with it. And I really appreciate that from Sutton. And on, well, on the subject, it really seems as though Crystal is stuck on oh, what's wrong with me describing something as being dark? What's wrong with using the word dark? And it's like, bitch, that is not the point. You know, the point isn't the the word that you use. The point is that you aren't backing it the fuck up. You know what I mean? 
you're saying stuff with that. You can say whatever the fuck you want. You can say anything you want, but you have to back it up. And many people have asked her to back it up and she is refusing to do so. And that is the issue. So I feel like Crystal needs to get that there is thick skull. That oh, so annoying to me. I was like, girl, that is not the point. Like, on, I got so pissed by a confessional. She was like, oh, if other people describe something as dark, they'd be taking... I'm like, they would probably back it up, though. God. Um, Erica chimes in. She essentially gets to the core of the issue. She points out that... She asks Sutton, basically, what do you... Uh, like, what is the issue, essentially? And um, she points out that... the is Like, the issue seems to be that Crystal is calling Sutton a racist. She's insinuating that she's racially insensitive. And so Erica basically blurts it out in black and white. Um, and then Lisa chimes in, riling Sutton up, because Lisa's like, this isn't good. This isn't good for you. This looks bad. And Sutton's like, I know it does. And I am pissed the fuck off. And I was like, oh, Sutton. We, we don't again. know what it and is. And I'm f***ing pissed. I said nothing wrong, and I said nothing bad. And this is the truth. It's not f***ing fair. I didn't bring it up. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And you did it, and you have a pattern with this. With your friends. You make up lies about your friends behind their backs, and you need to stop it, because I like you. And I'm telling you this because I like you. Like, God, I don't know what it is. I mentioned this a while back. It's like, Sutton and Shannon have stolen my heart. Honestly. Sutton on Orange County. Uh, Shannon Orange County, Sutton on uh, Beverly Hills. Because they're really, they're showing up. And they're finally like, you know what? I'm weird and I'm neurotic, but I am not a fucking doormat. And that is iconic. So yeah, Sun proceeds to check Crystal. And she basically says that the streets have been talking about her. And about her and her character. So how Sutton puts it is that Sutton and Crystal... Sutton has some friends who used to be friends with Crystal. And they say that Crystal is basically a mean girl in the sense that Crystal is going to align herself, make sure she's Gucci with, like, the most popular bitch in the room and throw anyone under the bus um, to, do, to accomplish that, basically. And so she... Sutton doesn't say all that at the table, but she, um, she says it in a confessional. And in Lisa Rinna's confessional, she basically co-signs this. Because Lisa says, I've heard what Sutton... I've heard the same things that Sutton is talking about, but I've chosen not to use it against Crystal. And so I feel like Lisa's bringing that up to almost as like a, a dig at Sutton. Like, oh, I know that same thing that Sutton knows, but I'm not bringing it up. But she kind of, it kind of backfired because Lisa's basically saying, yeah, Sutton's not lying. Say whatever the fuck you want about Sutton being weird, being like uh, irreverent, whatever, but she doesn't seem to be a liar. So let's, let's take note of that. And then while everyone's at the table, Sutton, she repeats what she said. She, because she had told Garcelle already um, what she said to Crystal. Now she lets everyone in on it about how Sutton encouraged her white daughter to have multicultural friends and stuff like that. And Crystal confirms. She says, yes, that is what Sutton said. And Crystal looks dumb right off the bat because everyone's like, is that it? Like, that's it? And Crystal's like, yes, it was, it was problematic. And I think what Crystal was going for was that she, you know, people would be like, oh, I'm not racist. I have tons of black friends. I feel like Crystal's maybe trying to go like that route, but that's that's like not what Sutton said. You know what I mean? Um, and then Garcelle, she chimes in and she blatantly says, yes, that does not seem dark. Because mind you, Crystal was like, oh yeah. Like when Kyle said, oh, I don't remember her saying anything dark. Crystal brushed it off by being like, oh, well, it's because you're not a person of color. You know, you, you don't understand. But now Garcelle, a black woman, is telling Crystal, an Asian woman, that does not seem dark, doesn't seem racist to me or anything like that. And then Crystal, she asked, oh, but, but was it problematic? She asked, was it problematic? Garcelle, no! What was problematic was you making it seem like it was worse than it was. 
that is what is problematic. It's not like she said something that was so horrible. But I she did. said she told you she some told of the details. me, but I was like, is there something else? Because that doesn't seem dark to me. Didn't seem as dark as you made it okay, out well, to okay. be. That's what I'm That's saying. That's okay. what I'm talking. Okay, but was it problematic to you? Was it problematic to what me? What she told you? No. What we're all taking offense to is the fact that you alluded to it being really, really bad. That could hurt her reputation. And so Crystal's sitting there. She looks fucking stupid. And so, and she's just like, yeah, thanks a lot, Crystal. Thanks for like bringing all this shit up. You know, like for for what? For nothing. So. Yeah, that was Sutton handled Crystal, and it was funny. Everyone on Twitter is like, "Crystal, do not ever do that again. You're on probation, girl." <laughs> but so yeah, it was a really good episode. Um, I played this little this little Sutton Crystal saga. It was pretty good. It was like a three episode kind of thing. It's closing out on the end of this episode. Hopefully, it's put to bed now. It can move on to bigger, better drama. So be sure to comment. Let me know what you thought. And be sure to also like and subscribe, of course. And stay tuned to watch uh, Rascals of Dubai and upcoming episodes. All right. Thanks. Bye.